A new program there is opening eyes and proving it's possible to close the black-white achievement gap in this country. Our Soledad O'Brien now on the reversal of the trend that's far too common in our poor communities. She's live in our beautiful Miami bureau with a preview of the CNN documentary series Black in America 2. Soledad, hello. We remember Black in America 1 from last year. This one, this time around, focusing on the, uh, the pioneers of today and also the leaders of tomorrow. Looking forward to this one. Well, thank you, TJ. Thank you very much. And as you mentioned, educators have really literally spent decades trying to figure out how you close that achievement gap, which is the academic performance difference between white and black and brown students. So some people say, well, fix schools. That's one strategy. But if for kids in poverty, that's often not enough. Another strategy is taking a look at societal change, you know, give jobs and housing and health care and, and all those things. But there's a place in Harlem where they're trying to do both things at once, and it's really working. What number? 16! The children at this Harlem preschool are learning all the skills they'll need to be successful in kindergarten, reversing a trend so common in poor communities. Poor children gain language about half the rate of middle class kids. By the time they enter kindergarten, they're already just thousands of words behind their peers. And Jeffrey Canada grew up one of those poor kids George in the Rasool. South Bronx. Now he's on a mission to level the academic playing field for children in Harlem. We think part of the problem in poor communities is we come up with a great program and it works with kids for two years. Guess what? That's not going to be sufficient. So Canada created the Harlem Children's Zone, where kids are surrounded with a series of programs, including baby classes, preschools, charter schools, after-school programs, and tutoring for college students. What are you learning about? It was hands-on learning when we visited the Promise Academy Charter School in the Harlem Children's Zone. So these are our fourth graders. These fourth graders have been in the zone's pipeline since birth. This particular class is the smartest class, not only uh, at Promise Academy, but probably in all of New York State. You and he's got the numbers to prove it. Math and English scores that beat the city and state averages. And a Harvard study that concludes these students have closed the black-white achievement gap. When I'm president of the United States of America, the first part of my plan to combat urban poverty will be to replicate the Harlem's children's zone in 20 cities across the country. Canada says creating just one program on the same scale as the Harlem children's zone will take at least $35 million, a tall order during a tough economy. We think if you look at what the cost is not to do this well. You know, these same communities, it's, you know, emergency room, it's special ed, it's jails and incarceration, it just doesn't so you make any sense. can front end it or back end it. That's exactly right. You're going to pay one way or the other. At least you end up with people who give you back more money than you've ever paid them. Now, President Obama has asked for $10 million in the 2010 budget for what he calls promised neighborhoods modeled after the Harlem Children's Zone. But as you heard by the math there, uh, TJ, uh, it's going to really require much more money than that. Canada says 60% of his funding comes from private sources. And if you think about how bad the economy is right now, he's really taking a hit. He's had to cut some staff so far. He says he hasn't had to interrupt any programs that are serving his kids. We're going to talk more about uh, education and some of the strategies that are really working for black America when we do our second part of Black in America that is on July 22nd and 23rd. We'll help you watch it. Yeah, of TJ. course. And of course, a lot of people will hear that $35 million and think that is a wonderful investment given what the country is spending so many, many billions on in other ways. Soledad, thank you so much for that. Looking forward to more of those reports. And of course, Black in America too. Enjoy Miami. We'll see you. Well, of course, like she said there, I need to mention before we go here, July 22nd, 23rd, 8 p.m. Eastern. That is when Black in America 2 will premiere. Karen. All right. Got it. We'll be